This is an art attack. This is an art attack. This is art attack. <laughs> Hello there, welcome once again to Art Attack, the big art show that gives your eyeballs a shock. How old do you think this prehistoric fossil is? Two million years? Three million years? Mm-mm. Ten. Ten minutes old. Come and have a look at this. Now, you need to draw a fish onto some cardboard and cut it out. So you've got a shape that looks something like that. Then cut the tail off, cut the head off, and you're left with the body. Then the idea is to snip slots in the body all the way along, just going three quarters of the way up. Now, a quick tip, if you have trouble cutting cardboard, then soak it in water first. That's it, just being careful of my fingers there, and creating a sort of comb effect. Now, when you've done that, just turn it round and bend these prongs first one way, then the other. One way, the other, alternating them all the way along, and slowly but surely, you create a fish skeleton. Then take the head, bend that as well, like that, in the front, and then the tail, bend that over, and put that at the back. Doesn't matter if you rip it. Now, you know what happens to bones throughout the years? Well, they crumble. So I'm just going to crunch them up a little bit. And again, doesn't matter if it tears, just crunch it up. It all adds to the effect. Now, you know the way fossils are made? Layer upon layer of sand, soil and rubble build up on top of a skeleton. Well, this fossil is made with layer upon layer of toilet paper. Now, I've got some PVA glue here. I've mixed it half and half with water. This is the squidgy bottle glue. It's actually school glue, isn't it? I'm just going to slop it on there, slop it all over the skeleton. Now, you don't need to stick the skeleton down to the board because what happens is the toilet paper soaks in the glue and sticks the whole lot down. And you just paint the glue right across the top. You don't have to be neat. Now, the idea is to completely cover it with three or four layers of toilet paper. And when you've done that, it will look something like this. There it is. And while it's still wet, you don't wait for it to dry. You take some sand and you literally sprinkle the sand all over your skeleton. That's it, just cover the whole lot. If you haven't got any sand, you could, of course, use some yellow powder paint. If you haven't got any yellow powder paint, see if you can borrow some flour from the kitchen. You can paint it yellow afterwards. There it is. Completely covered. Then let that set for about two minutes, but no longer than that. Otherwise, all the sand soaks the glue up and it all falls apart. So after about two minutes, you're left with something that looks like that. And it's just a case of shaking off all the excess sand. And there you have a fossilised fish. Of course, you don't have to do a fish. Leave the tail off, make the body a bit longer and do a fossilised snake. Or make the ribs a bit bigger and do a fossilised dinosaur. Or draw around your hand onto some card, cut it out, bend it and do a fossilised human hand. Mind you, you know, you don't have to use sand. Watch this. Try some glitter. A fossilised showbiz snail. So put down lots of cardboard, PVA glue, toilet paper and sand and you can make things look thousands of years old. Don't you think it makes me look so much younger? <laughs>
Very nice, very nice. Oh, by the way, don't go and nick the school one. One of those machines in the wrong hands could be disastrous. Mm. How do you give your artwork that final professional touch? Well, you can always frame it, not with a picture frame, but with a circle. Now, you need something circular to draw around, so I've got this plastic cup. And here's a drawing I've done. It's a silhouette picture of two heads. Now, what I'm going to do is place the cup halfway up the drawing and take a pen and very carefully just go around, drawing all the way around the cup. Don't go through the picture, just side to side. Lift it off, and there it is beautifully framed and it works for any type of picture here's another little picture i've done of a cottage now, i have to admit this is the type of cottage i'd like to live in look at that now i need a bigger circle for this so i'm going to bring in some sellotape and also i'm going to use one of these it's a gold pen they're brilliant for adding a final finishing touch themselves i'm just going to draw carefully around the sellotape if you need a bigger circle just try drawing around plates carefully lift it off and again beautifully framed and there's something else you can do to this i'm just going to bring in a ruler i'm just going to draw three lines either side of the circle probably about the same length and just touching the side of the circle there it is and there is something else you can add to your picture a fancy ribbon now don't worry not a real one a drawn one have a look at this is you bring the corners down here like that now don't worry it's not as complicated as it looks i'll show you how to do that you've just got to remember two s right there's a two and there's an s and if you practice them you draw them together like that and then just do curved lines on the edges all the edges like that that's one centimeter long and just join them up there it is, all the way round. And you can put some fancy bits in and you get good at it. And it just adds to that final professional touch. If you put a little message in the ribbon. And let's see what I know I'll write here. Home. Sweet. Home. And there it is. Just give your artwork that final professional touch it's a nice tip that how to make your pictures look great by finishing them off well just look at me an ordinary sort of statue made to look absolutely wonderful by the finishing touch of the laurel leaves <coughs> hello hello My name's Poppy. This is my dad's ear. This is my dad's mouth. Put them together and he looks like this. My name's Sarah and I painted a mouth on a pillowcase. My name's Holly. I painted this ear on a pillowcase. My name's Sarah and these are the eyes I painted on my pillowcase. Great art attack from Bedgebury School. Take each part of the face and put them together to make a jigsaw face. Now there are loads of different ways that you can create the parts of the face. Here, I'm doing an ear print. Nice and smudgy there. I've been using face paint on my ears. Makes me look like a pixie. Now I think for the nose, what I'm gonna do is just use ordinary watercolor poster paint. See, nice big nose in the middle there. And two nostrils. I'm using loads of different colors here. It all adds to the silly effect. Now for the eyes, another technique is to cut out eyes from a magazine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place them there. I don't want to give it away too soon. And for the hair, I've taken some scrap paper and I've snipped slots in it like this and then just scrunched those bits up. So that's the hair. And for the mouth, well, I think what I'm going to do is try another technique. I'll do a mouth in felt tip pen. So I'm going to draw a big pair of juicy lips. There it is. And the bottom lip. 
Now, I'm going to draw a zigzag rectangle there. You'll see why in a minute. Colour the lips in. Make them nice and red and rosy. Just make that bit a bit, bit bigger on the side there. And just keep colouring it in. And it doesn't matter if you leave little white bits because it makes it look as if the lips are shining. And you can see what I'm doing with this rectangle here. Again, I'm leaving that white and it looks like light is shining on those red lips. So, okay, just put the mouth in there like that. And there it is. And what do they look like when you put them all together? Well, we'll soon find out. Let's put the eyes in. Put them slanted a bit there, I think. Put the mouth up there. Let's see for these ears. I've done that here. And the other ear here. There it is. And what does it look like with the hair on? <laughs> Very silly, I think. Now, the good thing about doing faces in parts like this is that not only can you try out different features and make it even funnier, but if you do make a mistake on one of the features, you can throw it away and you don't have to start the whole thing again. Of course, you can make it as funny as you like using any technique you like as big as you like. Aye, aye. yourself, fiddle with your facial features and give yourself a jigsaw face attack. I'll see you next time. Ta-ra!